Hey everybody, Shadow Ninja here and welcome back to Rage Quit. Today we are doing another movie review and the film that we are analyzing is none other than Marvel's Black Panther. Before we get started, I just want to thank you guys for the ongoing support for this channel. We have now hit 41 subscribers. I remember when I had 5 subs, so just know that every view and every subscriber counts. Alright, let's get into this. If some of you aren't really caught up with the MCU timeline as of this point, T'Chaka, former Black Panther and King of Third World Country Wakanda, has been assassinated in a tragic accident set on framing the Winter Soldier and causing havoc within the Avengers. The King's son, T'Challa, now faces the responsibility of taking on the mantle as King of Wakanda and the Black Panther. We first see him in Civil War fighting against Captain America and the Winter Soldier, seeking revenge for his father's death, but later comes to terms with his loss and he realizes that he must learn forgiveness. That is the gist of how Black Panther was introduced into the MCU and we will now discuss elements from the standalone film. So if you haven't seen it yet and don't want to know about any spoilers, click off the video now. Alright, we are now in the spoiler section of the video. I just want to come out right off the bat and say I thought this movie was excellent. I truly believe that Black Panther did a good job in reinventing what it means to be a superhero. Not only does T'Challa have to be the king of his country, but he also must be a warrior set on defending it from danger. His character remains conflicted on his loyalties throughout the film. He wants to honor his father's name by being a good king, but he knows that some of T'Chaka's methods were flawed. The whole reason why Wakanda is so special in the MCU is because it is the home of the nearly indestructible resource known as Vibranium. This material is mined throughout the country and is implemented into everyday Wakandan life. We as an audience have already seen this already being used for Captain America's shield, but the technology Vibranium creates is beyond our time. Healing wounds automatically, autopiloting vehicles in the real world through a hologram, and of course making a badass Black Panther suit that can heal the wearer in combat. That's another thing the movie got right was the suit. The child's suit that he used in Civil War got an upgrade when his sister put the vibranium technology to better use, and by giving him a modified Black Panther collar to wear around his neck at any time, he can transform into the suit that has even Iron Man rivaled. The claws were a nice touch too. But the power of the Black Panther does not come from the suit itself but a heart-shaped leaf infused with vibranium into a liquid. Only the king can have the power of the Black Panther, and if anyone wants to challenge him, the power is taken away for a temporary time. A whole garden is dedicated to this so that there could be many more generations of the Black Panther. Aside from the superhero himself, the plot is actually intriguing as well. Basically, the vibranium technology is unknown to the world at this point, and the leaders of Wakanda try their best to hide it, until a looming enemy climbs his way to the top, seeking revenge and redemption. This villain is none other than Killmonger, a former Wakandan that has spent years trying to segue into Wakanda to challenge T'Challa. It's revealed that T'Chaka killed his brother for betraying the country, and the brother had a son. That son was Killmonger, and he challenges T'Challa in combat. The hero ends up losing the battle in the mantle of King. But after a surprising recovery, T'Challa gets hold of the Black Panther power himself, and fights an epic battle against Killmonger and his sympathizers, because the new king is hell-bent on spreading vibranium technology throughout the world and giving oppressed people the tools to destroy. T'Challa ultimately defeats Killmonger, taking back his throne, but the villain doesn't die without mercy. T'Challa sympathizes with Killmonger because he was robbed of a Wakandan life that he deserved. He offered to heal his enemy and Killmonger refused, dying by his own hand. The ending of the movie reveals that the vibranium technology will be shared with the world in the right way, giving refuge to oppressed people and boosting the world into a new technological advancement. If you think about it, this movie is exactly like The Lion King. The king's mantle is stolen from a sinister foe and the kingdom is in a state of tyranny, until the former king comes back and takes back the th crown. There's even a strangely familiar callback to when Simba spoke to Mufasa, as T'Challa is transported into an afterlife state where he can communicate with his father. Everything in this movie was enjoyable, and I didn't really find a single boring part. The movie isn't perfect, but it definitely raises the bar on how a superhero movie should be made. I'm very excited to be seeing Black Panther and his Wakandan allies return for Infinity War. I would have to rate this movie a high 8 or even a 9 out of 10. The reasoning behind this is because the acting and special effects were on point, the plot was interesting and developed smoothly, and it was just simply different. African culture doesn't get a lot of exposure nowadays, and to bring some of it into the limelight with a badass movie was a ballsy move, and it paid off. There's my review guys, I hope you liked the video, give this one a thumbs up if you did, and subscribe if you're new for more content, and I'll see you guys on the next one.